Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time once again for your weekly wrap up. And the other day on my community page, I posted up a photo from some volunteer work we did last week at my local high school. Uh, they wanted to stream their high school drive through graduation because they are under pandemic restrictions for large gatherings and a lot of family members couldn't make it to the graduation to watch their favorite graduates graduate. So uh, we brought the laptop and a bunch of gear out there and helped them do it. It took about eight hours from start to finish because of all the logistics involved. And a bunch of folks were curious about how we did it and what equipment we used. So I thought this might be a neat thing to talk about this week as we go behind the scenes of a high school graduation. Let's get to it. Now the graduation ceremony consisted of 142 graduates. Now in a normal year, you would have them all together and then you would read their names off one after the other. Probably would take about a half hour or 45 minutes for each to get their diploma. But because of the pandemic circumstances, things had to be done differently and the kids had to be brought to the diploma site uh, by car. So they brought them in in groups of 10 and every kid got a very personal graduation ceremony, which I thought was a really nice way for them to be recognized uh, this year, especially given that these high school seniors uh, left school in March and never came back again. For some, this was their first time back on campus since we closed everything down. So it was a very personal thing, and I think it was very, very well done and very special for these graduates. We had one drone that one of the teachers was flying around throughout the day. We had uh, one PTZ camera, which uh, stands for P Pan, Tilt, and Zoom. Uh, that camera is manufactured by uh, PTZ Optics, and they sent us one of their cameras free of charge a little while back for a review, which you can find uh, down below in my master playlist. What's great about this camera is that it can be controlled remotely so you can change its position and its zoom without having to be sitting with the camera all day. So in our little control room that we set up with the laptop, we were able to move that camera position automatically as each student was processed through. And then we also had two fixed cameras that we set up, and I'll show you the placements of all these things in a second. Uh, we did all of this through NDI which is a technology that was developed by New Tech a couple of years ago to bring uh, low latency video into your production hardware over a network. And this is what made it all possible for us th this day. It was really flexible to be able to run a long ethernet cable out to uh, the cameras and that was it. And it was just super, super convenient and super rock solid throughout the course of the day. Now this is where the graduation was taking place. Uh, so we had a stage set up underneath the entrance here and what would happen would be the car would drive up, the graduate would get out, they'd walk up to the stage, get their diploma, take a picture and then get off the stage, go for another round of pictures with their family over here and then they drove off. And I'll show you exactly what this looked like. So here is uh, one of the graduates getting dropped off. Uh, that was the car that he came in. Uh, he would come up to the stage, we'd cut to this shot to show them coming up at a kind of a forward view. Uh, then they would turn towards the uh, camera here for their photo and we had a photographer on site to take the picture as they were going through that process and then they would walk off the stage and then they would go over to that photo uh, taking area there and get their picture taken by the photographer there'd be some stuff with the family and then uh, they would move on from there now what's cool about this is that a lot of those shots were taken with the ptz camera which was located under the umbrella here so what would happen would be uh, the safe shot we'd start on was that wide shot you saw at the beginning and then when the student was walking up on stage we'd cut to the other camera that was uh, shooting that stare and that would give us the opportunity to reposition the PTZ camera to the stage shot and then after the student got off we would cut back to the stairs and then move the PTZ camera again and that worked out uh, really well and that camera was running rock solid all day and the cool thing about the camera is that it is powered over Ethernet. So we only had a single Ethernet cable running to the camera, and that was all we needed for power control and video coming back. And it, again, it was just super rock solid. Uh, I was in this area right over here where that open door is. That was the school cafeteria. So we ran that wire uh, over the, the road, essentially, over the grass and then uh, into the room there. Uh, we picked up a couple of these. Uh, oh, here's the camera, actually. Let me show you this first. Uh, this is the camera in operation. So we had set some presets, and I'll show you how we did that in a second. Um, but you can see the camera here kind of jumping between those preset 
uh, locations for uh, the process as it was working out. And there's that single Ethernet cable there controlling everything. Uh, now, what I was about to say is that we have this uh, yellow strip here, which is where we had put the wire down on the road. And the uh, staff there bought a couple of these happy buy uh, three-pack uh, wire cord ramps. And these things were really good. They interlock with each other. And they were super easy to set up. They were very, very sturdy. I think we just had to adjust it once when a car got stuck on it. Um, but after that, it was perfectly fine. And we had trucks and cars and motorcycles and everything driving over these things throughout the course of the day. And after the uh, event was over, they looked almost good as new. You know, a little scuffed up from some of the vehicle traffic, but no cracks or anything. Uh, they really held up well. And the Ethernet wired dish channels inside of it. Uh, super simple and super sturdy, so that was pretty good. So in addition to having the PTZ camera over here and the stage camera over here, we had a third camera position, a fixed camera, that was pointed down towards the parking lot. And this is an area where I would have preferred to have somebody on that camera or maybe uh, brought in another PTZ camera to pick up some of the fun little things we were seeing throughout the course of the day because there was really cool decorations on cars. There was kids and pets and other folks just kind of hanging out and doing some cool stuff while they were waiting their turn. And it would have been great to be able to show some of that in a little bit more detail. But we only had one PTZ camera and I felt it was better used, of course, uh, pointing at the graduates. So that's the one thing that I would have done a little differently. Uh, but we did have a drone out there. As I mentioned, one of the teachers has a uh, Phantom 4 Pro, and that drone supports HDMI out through its controller. So we plugged in another NDI box into that controller and got footage out of the drone throughout the day. The only issue we had with it is that it, it wouldn't get rid of all of the on-screen display stuff, so this battery indicator uh, was on it all day long, and that was a bit of a bummer, but the shots were pretty good. It was basically looking like this, and you didn't lose a lot in the process there. Now, the NDI boxes we were using on the drone and the two fixed cameras are these NDI Connect Spark boxes. Uh, these are great. They're super reliable. Uh, two of them were out in the sun all day and were able to keep transmitting without issue. All you do is plug your HDMI in here, and it spits out NDI video over the network through the Ethernet connection here. They work over Wi-Fi also, but I don't recommend that just because Wi-Fi can be unpredictable. Ethernet is usually the best way to go. Uh, these do compress the video. There are some NDI boxes out there, like this one I've got from Bird Dog, uh, that will deliver pretty much a, an uncompressed signal, but they consume a lot more bandwidth, and I was nervous about uh, whether or not my super long Ethernet cables out in the sun might have some issues, so I wanted to keep the network bandwidth uh, to a minimum. So these are about 15 megabits per second per box. Uh, so we had three of these, and then uh, the PTZ camera has the same compressed NDI protocol built into that. So we had essentially four of these running at a max of 15 megabits per second, and it was flawless throughout the entire eight hours. But if you wanted super high quality video, maybe you would go with uh, something like a bird dog or some of the new NDI connect boxes that uh, don't rely on the compression. But generally for the type of things that we were doing here, this was fine. I think gaming and other things where there's a lot of fast motion is where you might want something that does a little less compression. But beyond that, it worked great for us throughout the course of the day. And we had four cameras we could switch between all brought in over the network. Now, of course, these boxes transmit audio in addition to video. So we hooked up a microphone to one of the cameras, and then it would pass that audio through the HDMI and then over to NDI so we could hear the students being announced. We could hear all the cheering that was going on, and we would turn on and off that audio throughout the course of the day depending on what was happening. We would turn off the audio during moments of downtime and then turn it back on again uh, when people were walking on stage. Now, we did uh, use vMix for this, which is my new preferred live production video software. I'm using it here in the studio now exclusively, and it runs great on pretty much any device that also runs games very well. So if you've got a desktop with a nice GPU, you're golden. If you've got a laptop with a nice GPU, you're also good to go. And the laptop I've been using now is my gaming laptop, the Lenovo Legion Y740. 
I bought this around Christmas time. We did a review on it a few weeks ago. And what's funny was I bought this primarily to have a portable gaming machine I could use down here in the studio, but also for when I was traveling and stuff. And it's turned into much more than that. It does great VR, and now it's a great live video production switcher. In fact, I was using this laptop to run the channel uh, for several weeks as I was transitioning away from my TriCaster. I'm going to do a video about my transition to vMix in the near future. And it's just amazing how versatile and awesome this thing is and how portable it is too. It's pretty compact, it's lightweight. Just, I just love it. I can't tell you how much I love this thing. So it was really uh, performing just brilliantly throughout the course of the eight hours that we were streaming. Uh, this was a very CPU heavy production because it looks like the NDI video does eat up a lot of CPU time. So the four cameras that we brought in uh, were occupying about 50% of the CPU horsepower throughout the day. So we probably could have added another two cameras to the mix, but I was trying to keep it uh, at a reasonable level so we didn't run into too many technical issues, especially if we had thermal throttling or something else going on. But the good news is it kept itself relatively cool throughout the day. The fans were really going on it, but it held up and did quite nicely. Now I've got vMix running here on the laptop, so I thought I would show you what our controls look like. I'm just gonna load up the preset that we set for the day there. And I've got the PTZ camera actually set up in my backyard so I can kind of show you uh, the workflow. So what we did was we put together a little slate here that would run uh, so when we were in between graduates or something, we could have something to show the viewer. And then the PTZ camera here is on input number five. And if I click on it here, uh, you'll see the left-hand picture is showing us the PTZ camera and the right-hand picture here is showing us the, uh, the slate that's running. So basically, this is your preview, and this is your program. And program is what you're streaming out. So we could get stuff ready in the background, and then we could cut back to uh, the program uh, when it resumed again. Now, given that the graduates were following a very predictable pattern throughout the course of the day, we programmed in some presets for the PTZ camera so we could get the camera in position very quickly and reduce mistakes that we could make if we were having to position it ourselves manually. Uh, so right now it's in my backyard, but all the key presets here are still the same. Uh, so right now it's on its safe shot of the parking area when the car arrives and the graduate gets out, that wider shot. Uh, and then when they got up on stage, we would hit S and that would position it to zoom in for the stage here, as you can see. And then when they went to get their picture taken, we hit C for camera, and that would move it over to that spot where they got their photo taken. And what I thought I would do real quick is just show you this in action on the day of the event. So what would happen here is the uh, graduate would start walking, and what James would do is wait for them to get over to uh, the visible portion of that stage shot, and then we would cut over to that, and then you can see his fingers there going to the S key, and then the preview will get the stage zoomed in, so the camera would go in there and adjust its exposure automatically, and then by the time the student was on the stage, that shot was ready, we would take the picture, and the photographer, I should say, would take the picture, and then after that was done, and the student started to turn to walk off the stage, uh, we would then go back to the other shot, and then we would hit that P uh, key to go to the picture location. And by the time the student was over there, we were ready to go with that photo shot. And we were able to follow them uh, through essentially three different stages of the event with the same camera. Uh, we didn't do a lot of other key shortcuts, which I should have done because you can see there he kind of hit the mouse by accident and pulled up a configuration screen, so that was a little treacherous. Uh, but generally, it worked out really well, and then we would cut over to a safe shot after the graduate was done with the picture uh, to get things set up for the next one that was coming through. And when the drone was in the air, we used the drone, and then when it wasn't in the air, we used that uh, camera that was pointed down at the driveway. But overall, uh, it was a pretty predictable workflow, and we really got into the mechanics of it uh, as the day progressed, and things really uh, went off without a hitch for the most part. And I thought I would also show you some other things in the vMix interface here. So the uh, slate here was actually a combination of three different things. We had a PNG file, uh, we had a looping background, and we had some text that I added. And what I did is I went into the vMix interface here into their multi-view feature, and I was able to configure all of these things to build out that graphic. I, I could probably organize my screen a little bit better. I'm still learning all the different organizational tools they have available, 
uh, but that's how you can build stuff. And if you wanted to maybe change the text, for example, um, you know, I could just go on and just change the text here. That would update it here, but also uh, over here where we were using that uh, as a slate. Uh, we also had music that we were running throughout the event as well. Uh, this was all YouTube safe music that the teachers picked out, and that was just kind of running as a bed underneath everything else that was going on. Uh, that worked out great because there wasn't always something to hear, and it was nice that there was some audio uh, that would run throughout the day. This was just a loop of music that would just go and go and go. Uh, so that was good. Now, one thing I set up but didn't end up using was the vMix lower thirds. Uh, for the graduates as they came in. It just got to be too complicated and we were worried about misidentifying people or maybe having a spelling error or something, so we ended up not doing this. But basically on vMix, uh, depending on which version you have, you can have a certain number of overlays that you can run like we have right now running. And they have some really cool animated lower thirds that you can customize, which I did here for the school. And what I thought was really neat about these is that you can tie them to a data source uh, so what I did is I set up a little spreadsheet here, and rather than having to load everything into vMix, I can just step through this spreadsheet, and as I do that, see that? The name changes. So you could have this queued up in the background. You just move the spreadsheet to the next item in your list, or find the person you're trying to identify, and then you can uh, bring it back on screen live with the correct name in there. Very fast workflow. You probably want two displays for that, so you can have a place to put this window and quickly click over there. Uh, but again, just some really cool stuff that you can do with vMix and the fact that you could tie this to live data and bring in scoreboards and all sorts of stuff that you might have from a different data source I think is just really awesome. And I'm going to be exploring more uses of that uh, in the near future. So that was something that I would like to do a little bit more with soon. Now another little regret that I have from the day was not making better use of the PTZ Optics software. Uh, they have some really nice controller software here that allows you to control the camera with a mouse. Uh, the problem was, though, is that I had to keep jumping back to the PTZ Optics app to do this because there wasn't a quick way inside of the vMix window to uh, adjust the camera on the fly. What was happening was that occasionally uh, the kid would be in that photo position, but then they would walk somewhere else off, off screen, so we would lose them. And I really wanted to be able to pan the camera quickly, but I couldn't do it in a way that didn't jeopardize the production because if I had uh, this thing up and hit the wrong button or, you know, it just was getting to be too many different controls on one screen with one mouse and two people trying to run it. But what I didn't realize was just how nicely uh, the PTZ op Optics software works with a game controller. So check this out. I've already connected my game controller to the mix and I can just move it around here with the D-pad. I think you can configure the sticks to work with it also, but for right now, it looks like on this controller, the D-pad is how it works. And then if I want to zoom the camera in, I can just push the trigger button here and then move it around a little bit more. And it moves very smoothly also, so I could have really done a lot more with that PTZ camera, especially related to the kids getting their pictures taken and stuff, and that's something that I regretted doing. And the reason why I didn't set it up was that I assumed wrongly uh, that if the PTZ optics software was in the background, it wouldn't control the camera position, but in fact, even with vMix as the focused application here, you can see that the camera is still moving with the controller. So that is one thing that I would do totally differently now uh, if I had the opportunity to do it all over again. And the cool thing is, is that even though I'm moving the camera right now with the PTZ software, if I hit S in vMix, it would return to the safe stage position or to the parking position and then I could pick it back up with the controller here and move it around again more freely. So really cool stuff, and that is what I'll probably do next time. Uh, probably to be safe, though, is that I would uh, connect up a second computer for the camera control just in case an error message pops up or something on screen. I don't want to interrupt what's going on with vMix, uh, so maybe a little Windows tablet or something is what I would use to control the camera in the future. Now, as far as connectivity is concerned, the school had a symmetrical gigabit fiber connection uh, here in Connecticut, the state runs an ISP, essentially, for schools. Uh, it's fiber optics, super high quality. Uh, we had no connection is issues whatsoever. And, of course, the building was empty as well, so there was no competition for that upstream bandwidth either. So that was not a problem. Uh, if I did see connectivity issues when I was doing my initial uh, review of everything that they had there, I probably would have rented a Teradec Video. We reviewed one of those a little bit earlier in the year. Uh, what that does is it allows you to bond to three different networks. You can have two cellular networks plus whatever you have on site. So that way, if any one of those three connections goes down, 
your stream still goes out. And that device worked really well in our testing. I'm, I know how to use it. Uh, so I would have brought that on to the mix to keep the connection up throughout the day. But given what they had on site for uh, network infrastructure, I didn't think that was necessary. So altogether, it uh, worked great. I was surprised everything went as well as it did. Uh, and I can certainly see how running a live streaming business can be a very stressful thing given all of the different things that can go wrong throughout the day. Uh, but the good news was everything that we set up worked great. The vMix software was super rock solid. The laptop worked just fine throughout everything. And um, I was really surprised that everything went as smoothly as it did. I had brought James with me just to have another person on, on hand to deal with technical issues as they arose, but none did. And it turned out to be a very nice day for us and for the graduates who each got a very special uh, personalized way to end their high school career. Not ideal for them, of course, given all the circumstances, but it was great that uh, they were able to share that moment with their families and have a moment to uh, get their diploma and be recognized for their accomplishments. So that was it. Lots of fun. Hope you all enjoyed this behind the scenes overview. I certainly enjoyed uh, putting it together and the challenge of making it work. And uh, we'll see if we do any more of these in the future. And I'll share with you some of the things that we do new with those. Now, this week's wrap up is being brought to you by all of you. We had some super chatters come in on one of the live streams that we did for the channel, not the graduation. Uh, they include Top Cat Electronics Susan, Mark Dell, and Grayson Petty. And then we also added some new supporters this week. Christian M signed up via the donor box page. And then Susan from Top Cat Electronics also became a YouTube member. Uh, she was joined by Michael K and Max Playback, who also became new YouTube members. I want to thank everyone who contributed this week, along with everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis, and everyone who watches the channel on a regular basis too, because all of those things equal channel growth and are a great way to support what we're doing here. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution to the channel. We also support that YouTube membership program I mentioned earlier that gives you these really cool badges that show up next to your name in chats and on comments. Uh, so you can sign up there. Uh, we did three live streams here on the channel this week. Uh, the, other, uh, the most recent one was the setting up of the new Mega EverDrive Pro for the Sega Genesis. We'll be looking at that a little bit later this week. Uh, we also were playing around a bit with a new app for uh, VR headsets that allows you to experience your NES games in a very different way. It was a lot of fun. You can check out that stream uh, linked there on screen. It's also down in the master playlist. And we also did a live stream setting up the HP NV Pro printer that we reviewed this week. Oddly enough, that was one of the most viewed live streams I've done since I've been doing these regular live streams. It's amazing how many views I get for printers on this channel, even though they're not the most popular items among subscribers. Uh, for whatever reason, my most watched videos are about printers. Maybe it's just because not that many people do printer videos. I didn't get anything up on the Extras channel this week, but we will be doing some unboxings in a little bit, and those will be there soon, uh, so stay tuned for that. And then on the main channel, we had a review of that HP printer. Uh, we also reviewed the Unify Dream Machine insofar as setting up an isolated IoT network on a VLAN, and I demoed how I did that. One of the cool things about the Unify networking equipment is that their access points can direct uh, specific SSIDs, network identifiers, to specific VLANs without having to have four or five different access points hooked up to different ports on your switch. It's really neat how it works. You can see all of that in the video that I did there. Uh, one thing to note is that this is not necessarily a security thing in that there are ways to circumvent uh, VLANs from a security standpoint, but if you're looking to isolate your network and reduce some of the ability of certain devices to reach things on your main network, uh, this is a pretty easy way to do it actually uh, with the Unify equipment. And then we also had our monthly sponsored video from Plex where we took a look at their new Watch Together feature. Uh, this allows you to call up a few friends and you can all watch a movie together in sync. And if somebody pauses it to go to the bathroom, everybody gets paused. And then when you hit play again, it'll start up for everybody once more. It works with the free Plex movies and TV shows in addition to uh, the things that you have on your own server as well. Pretty cool stuff. And we uh, stepped through that entire feature in the video. So this week on the channel, we've got a couple of things to look at. I'm hoping to do a review of that Mega EverDrive Pro. I love new retro technology and I love flash cartridges, so this will be a fun one. 
Uh, we also got in the new Legion 5, which is the newest mid-range gaming laptop from Lenovo. Uh, that's coming up a little later this week. Jake's going to come by and pick that up and get working on it soon. And then I think if I've got time, I'll try, I'll try to get this thing done finally. This is the QNAP uh, network switch that is also a NAS, uh, and the switch has a uh, PoE feature built into it also, so I can drive my PTZ camera off of this thing too. It's kind of like a kitchen sink of networking. Uh, it's got a NAS built in and a whole bunch of other cool stuff, so we'll be looking at that hopefully later this week. We've done two live streams on it already, just getting it set up and out of the box and everything, so you can check those out in the live stream feed. If you want to be notified every time we do something here on the channel, you can click the bell to get that notification. Uh, that will let you know when I'm doing uh, video uploads and live streams. We have other channels that you can find me on, including my Amazon shop, where most of my videos now are starting to make their way over there. Uh, we also live stream to Amazon, and that might be useful because we can actually put the products up on screen with their interface. You can easily click around and see what they cost and everything. So if you see me go live, you might want to go pop over there and watch those live streams on Amazon. You can engage with the channel through my Facebook group, the email list, and of course the store. Uh, the store is going to get some new stuff this week, including some of those Amazon tablets, and I think I'm probably going to uh, sell the Lenovo that we reviewed with the AMD chip inside of it. So definitely sign up for my email alert that will let you know when those items are placed up on the store and uh, they'll be ready for you to buy. And there's only one each of these things because these are the actual items that we reviewed here on the channel. So I usually sell them obviously for less than they cost new because they are now used. And if you're looking for a good deal, uh, get on that email list and I will send an email as soon as those items are added to the store. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I really enjoyed the challenge of getting that live stream to work. It took us about two days to do it, um, the setup and the execution, but it was well worth it. And uh, it was great to see uh, those kids get that recognition that they deserve for their hard work throughout their four years of high school. So fun stuff, and I hope you all enjoyed the behind the scenes look at it. It's fun because every one of these productions requires something different. So the next time we do one, I'll do another one of these videos to tell you about what we did to make that one work. So that's going to do it for now. Uh, until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.